Hi, Brian here again with another update to a backyard project. Um, this time it's a rainwater collection system. So as I've mentioned before, I live in Austin, Texas, and uh, we're in the middle of a drought, so uh, rainwater collection is becoming a really important thing around here. Um, and so to reduce my dependence on lake water, um, I've decided to start harvesting rainwater off of my, ha off of my roof. Um, now to do a full full blown system off of my entire roof would be a massive project um, which would involve getting up on my second story roof and um, putting in gutters up there because my house doesn't have gutters or didn't originally. Um, but so for this project I wanted it to be something that I could manage by myself and which would be pretty cheap. Uh, so I decided to just do um, the back of my house and just the first story roof. Um, so you can see that pictured here. Um, this is an old picture from before most of my backyard projects, but you can see uh, we have that little patio roof and then the roof um, to the left there of it. Um, and that roof, in addition to collecting rainwater directly, also collects a lot of rainwater off of the second story roof. And so it seems like a pretty good uh, bang for the buck in terms of um, effort and cost for the, the gutters. So the plan is to put a gutter around just that roof and then to harvest it on the side of the house um, on the left side there which you can't see. Um, so the basic idea I decided to go with is using um, 55 gallon blue barrels uh, just like I used in my aquaponics system. The reason for this is these are uh, pretty cheap to source. Uh, there's a person in the area who's selling them for around 20 bucks each. So I was able to uh, get 200 gallons of capacity for not a lot of money. Um, if you look at rainwater collection cisterns and things that are sold for the purpose of rainwater collection, you'll find that they're a lot more expensive than that. Um, you could spend several hundred dollars just on a tank and it wouldn't even be all that big. Um, so going the blue barrel route uh, was really cost effective. Um, and their food grade, um, the tanks that I got um, had stored soy sauce. Um, and so once I cleaned that out, they should be just fine for this. Um, the overall system, um, after I bought everything at Lowe's, including gutters and plumbing and tanks and everything, um, cost me less than $400. And again, you'd, you'd spend easily that on just a tank if you were going um, with a sort of off-the-shelf type of solution. So, And because the engineering aspect of these projects is what I enjoy the most, um, you know, I didn't want something off the shelf if, if it was going to cost more. So anyway, um, here's all the stuff that I bought uh, at Lowe's. I spent several hours there figuring out what everything I would need is, um, kind of designing it in the in the aisle there. Um, and the basic approach that I'm taking is, um, again, using guttering. And I went with vinyl guttering just because it seemed like it'd be easier for me to deal with. Um, it's not quite as pretty because you have, you know, it's not seamless, but... Uh, it was not expensive and um, it ended up being pretty easy to install. Um, so here's some pictures of the area that I'm putting the tanks. Um, so like I mentioned before, it's kind of on the side of my house. So there's this part, of, part between my house and my neighbor's house where neither of us go there because there's no gate to our backyard on that side. And it's behind our air conditioners and so you can't even see back there. So it's really just unused wasted space and so it seemed like an ideal place to put the tanks rather than have them take space in my backyard. Um, I was a little bit concerned about the visibility from the road and um, that being a concern but as it turns out the air conditioner perfectly hides it so that was not a concern. Um, so anyway I bought four uh, two by two foot um, concrete pavers from Lowe's and kind of dug out a little area so that I could make them level and I laid them down in the yard there um, where the tanks are going to go. One thing I didn't anticipate uh, is that my I had a sprinkler head underneath one of the pavers so I had to um, basically cap that. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of rainwater or uh, water savings just by the fact that I capped one of my sprinklers in this project before I've even collected any rainwater. Uh, but anyway, so I put the tanks in there and then the first thing I did was connect the tanks at the bottom. Um, so this allows all the tanks to kind of equalize in depth, so it doesn't really matter where I dump the water, um, it'll ultimately level out across all four tanks. Um, and also this is what I'm going to be attaching to a pipe that goes to my backyard and ultimately to a hose bib, and that's how I'm going to be 
you know, using the water is through that. Um, so to connect them to the tanks, what I did is uh, followed the same process that I used for my aquaponic system in that I used one inch threaded fittings um, and then I used the same gaskets that I bought on Amazon for that project to seal them up against the, the barrels. Um, one thing that I did differently this time though is I bought a one and a quarter inch uh, drill bit which ended up being the perfect diameter um, to drill holes in these tanks which was just big enough that the I was able to, to put the fitting in but small enough that the uh, threads of the fitting actually gripped really well. Um, so you know I didn't have access to the inside of the tank like I did on my aquaponic system so I couldn't thread the other end and so I really needed it to grip into the hole um, and that that diameter ended up working perfectly. Um, so I used some adhesive caulk which really doesn't adhere to this type of plastic but I used it just hopefully to fill in some little gaps that there might be around the seal. Um, I'm not entirely sure that was all that effective. Um, it might have been just as good to just use the regular seal as is, but anyway, I used that. Um, and then I, you know, got all my fittings, um, primed them, and then glued them all together, screwed these things in, um, really good and snug. One thing to be careful with um, when screwing these fittings in is that the gasket doesn't pop out or doesn't kind of ooze out the side. Um, so kind of go slow with it and you know be sure that um, that gasket is isn't sticking out. So from there, I, the next step I did was tackle the plumbing for the the drain into the tanks. So this is the part that's going to actually take the rainwater from my downspout and deposit it into my tanks. Now, because all four tanks are connected, it's not critical that the rainwater dump into all four tanks. Um, but because the tank holes are small enough, I did want to let it overflow and drain into more than one at a time um, so that in a heavy rain the maximum amount of rain uh, can go into the tanks. Um, so the tank holes are about an inch and a half or they're actually about two inches in diameter um, which a one and a half inch PVC fitting can pretty snugly fit into. Um, so what I ended up doing is I had a three inch pipe coming off of the um, downspout area and that I turned into uh, a one and a half inch fitting um, that would go into the hole for the tank and then that continued on to another one and a half in inch fitting into the tank and then finally that last little stretch I stepped down to a two inch pipe just because it didn't need to be as wide um, and then that also went into a one and a half inch um, like T basically into that final third tank um, and then I've put a little fitting at the end that is kind of angled upwards but off to the side so that if the water, you know, is coming too fast and still can't <laughs> deposit into those tanks fast enough, um, it can overflow. Um, that's also my main s scheme for if the tanks are full, <laughs> it'll basically ooze out around the holes and out that uh, angled piece. Um, so there's not like a really well-designed overflow on this right now. Uh, now moving over to the actual downspout part. This part's a little bit complicated. Um, so basically there's this concept of the first flush filter, um, which basically, um, in a nutshell, you want the, the, the residue that's collected on your roof, um, which gets washed off by that initial amount of rain, to go somewhere other than your rain tanks. Um, you don't want all that gravel and stuff and bird crap and whatever. Um, to get in your rain tanks if you can help it. So um, uh, rainwater collection systems often have what's called a first flush filter and basically the idea is that first gush of water goes into a section that's separate from your rain tanks and then once that fills up the overflow then gets diverted into your rain tanks. Um, and so this is my attempt at that. So basically this is a four inch PVC pipe um, which I've inserted a three inch piece with uh, some rubber tubing around it to seal it in there to basically have it step down to a smaller diameter. And then I found this little water bottle at Walmart that fit in the four inch but not in the three inch. Um, and basically the idea with this water bottle is that you put it inside that four inch tube and then when the first rain comes in the water and the junk kind of washes around the bottle into the bottom of that four inch tube and then it pushes that bottle up to the top up against that three inch diameter piece where it stops 
And at that point, it basically seals it off, and then the water from then on uh, overflows into your rain tanks. Um, so that's the basic idea here. Um, and then, of course, it, I had to get a number of different fittings to go from that 4-inch to the 3-inch that's go, going to my rain tanks, and then to the fitting that fit onto the downspout. Um, so that's basically what that whole mechanism is. Um, and then coming off the roof, you see the downspout piece, which I've attached there into the, the drain portion of the gutter. Um, and again, this is the vinyl solution. This is actually um, by a company called Rango. And this piece, or this type, doesn't require any uh, sealer or glue or anything. Um, everything snaps together, and then there's like little rubber gaskets to keep everything sealed. Um, I don't know how long this... this um, system would last you know i'm sure it's not as rugged as aluminum especially in the hot texas sun but it sure was easy to put together um the gasket ends and fittings do require a bit of a a little bit of torquing around to get them to fit in and i did have to use a wrench to kind of snap those uh, the tabs on but in general it was a pretty easy system to deal with and it was you know completely no mess um and after testing it with some water from a hose, it doesn't seem to leak. So at that point, then it was just a, a matter of installing the gutter like you would any gutter system. Um, the one kind of unique concern to this type of system is that because I only have one downspout for a rather long distance of gutter, I needed the gutters to basically slope downward over that entire distance. Um, usually if you see a gutter installation by professionals, they have a downspout every, I don't know, 10 or 20 feet. And so they don't really have to slope that far before it, the water drains. Um, but in this system, I did have to slope a good 35 or so feet. And so anyway, it ended up working out. I had enough, uh, enough trim to work with that I was able to slope up gradually all the way around the house or the back patio um, and then capped it off. And then I just used a hose, dumped some water in at one end, and sure enough, it, it all comes out at the other end. And... Uh, diverted into my tanks rather well. One other thing on the rain on the first flush filter that I forgot to mention is uh, in order to actually clean it out you want to be able to to open up the bottom so what I ended up getting is this um, cap thing that basically has a threaded end that um, pushes this rubber gasket out when you, as you th as you screw it and then that seals it up against the edge of the the inside of the four inch um, PVC and so this is an easy way to add and remove a cap to the bottom of that flush filter. And so basically it's sealed normally and fills up with water and then that water diverts uh, once it fills up. But then every now and then you want to remove that cap and to let all the junk out. Um, one other thing you want is you want that first flush filter to slowly drain when it's not raining um, so that it's not full of water all the time. Otherwise it's not, much, it's not ready <laughs> for a new rainfall. Um, and so I drilled a very small hole at the bottom of that flush filter um, to let it drain slowly. Um, so in between rains it should get dry again and then be ready for a new flush of water. So that's the system. Um, the general rule of thumb I think is something like for every thousand square feet of roof and one inch of rain you can collect 600 gallons of water. And so this being only a 200 gallon system um, I expect this to fill up pretty quickly so um, you know if I do decide to add capacity I do have that ability um, the fourth uh, tank on the end I just have a a T on that drain part at the bottom and then I can just basically cut off the cap that I put on there and then continue on by adding tanks and I don't even have to extend the drain part because they're all connected and they'll just level off with each other Anyway, I appreciate you watching, and um, I encourage you to look into harvesting rainwater for yourself, um, especially if you live in areas like I do where drought is an ongoing concern. Thanks. Take care.